सो लास्ट टाइम हमने ये एक्सप्रेशन uh, किया था इसका रियल पार्ट हम लोग सॉल्व कर चुके हैं जो कि ये चीज मौजूद थी नाउ वी आर लुकिंग फॉर दिस इमेजिनरी पार्ट मैं इसको थोड़ा सा तो ये हमारे पास मेन इक्वेशन है और यहाँ पर ये इसका इमेजी पार्ट है सो प्रिंसिपल वैल्यू हम फाइंड आउट कर चुके हैं तो मैं इसको यहाँ पर लिख देता हूँ तो जो हमारे पास प्रिंसिपल पार्ट की वैल्यू आई थी इसके स्क्वायर बाय मेगा स्क्वायर और इसके आगे हमारे पास उसका थर्मल प्रोडक्शन जो है वो मौजूद अब अगर हम यहाँ पर ये कंसिडर करें कि जो हमारे पास थर्मल कोरेक्शन है वो स्मॉल है इज अगर आप टी ई को जीरो को अप्रोच करवाएं ठीक है तो फिर आई कैन रिमूव दिस टर्म एंड एफ विद मेगा पी स्क्वायर बाय के स्क्वायर और ये के स्क्वायर बाय ओमेगा स्क्वायर प्लस अयोटा फाइव और यहाँ से मेरे पास आ जाएगा ओमेगा बी स्क्वायर बाय ओमेगा स्क्वायर प्लस अयोटा फाइ ओमेगा बी स्क्वायर ओवर रखना है यहाँ से अब हम इमेजी पार्ट की बात कर सकते हैं अब इसको थोड़ा सा अगर हम सिंप्लीफाई करें तो ये मैं इसको इस तरह लिख सकता हूँ ओमेगा स्क्वायर वन माइनस ओके now uh, taking square root on both sides so so that turns out to be omega इसको मैं अगर इस तरीके से लिखू मेगा पी दैट विल बी वन माइनस एटा पाए
and uh, that will give me power one by two. So as we are considering this uh, imaginary part as a small one, so we can uh, do this, uh, and this will be minus one. Uh, as we are uh, taking this imaginary part as a smaller part, so we can expand, uh, we can use the theorem series expansion, and I can write it one plus uh, nx. Uh, I can use this expansion that one plus x raised to power n is one plus nx plus so on. So I am doing this. So then I have to. Now just have to write plus by two. And this is what I get. So uh, now what we are left with the, the derivative of this uh, distribution function. So what will be the derivative of this distribution function? Partial F not by partial B. So I'm writing it. This is the derivative of basically uh, the Maxwellian distribution that we start using it to derive these plasma oscillations. I think uh, I have already, I think we I have already uh, defined you about the Maxwellian distribution that I'm I'm going to take. So square by v comma square. So this was basically my uh, distribution that. This term exponential minus v square by v thermal square, and then I, when I will take the derivative, this is what I will get. So by just uh, right in it in, in simplest simplest form minus two v by i v thermal cube, and we have exponential minus v square by Square. So this this is uh, my derivative, and I'm going to use it in this equation. And uh, there's another thing that uh, we can use that uh, we have uh, we can replace omega with omega p, or you can say that we can approximate v phi by omega p by k. Okay, I will I will uh, give you. Actually, we are calculating this uh, derivative at v equals v phi. So we have to write v phi here, and we have to write v phi here, and this uh, v phi. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to substitute it here. So this omega is is the complex one. So we have omega real plus iota omega i. This is all you can write each and every complex equation. So we have omega p plus iota pi by 2 omega p q by k square. And then this uh, derivative at v equals v phi. So we have minus 2 
3 phi by the thermal cube and exponential minus v phi square by v thermal square. Okay. Now this v phi is omega by k, so I have to use, now okay, uh, from here you can see that uh, the real part mapped with omega p and the magic part is mapped with this one. This is how you compare uh, the real and magic parts on both sides of the equation. So imaginary of this omega is minus, you can cancel this two with two and we have and then root pi and this pi, so we have under root pi. And uh, omega cube by k square. So instead of v phi, I'm writing it here, omega p by k. But in exponential, we are going to retain this uh, omega part. We are not replacing it with the omega p. We are going to keep this uh, thermal correction in this exponential part. So after a certain simplification that you can see here, that we have uh, omega p4, and we have k cube, we have the thermal cube. So I can write it in a bit simpler way. Omega p here, omega p by k v thermal cube. And uh, I'm, I'm going to write uh, omega what what is the the real express the total expression for omega? It was some this one omega square equals omega p square plus k square v thermal square. So if I put it here, and I will get exponential minus omega p square over k square v thermal square and exponential minus 3 by 2. So here you can see that uh, the total imaginary part uh, or the imaginary part of uh, omega, imaginary of omega is negative. So this means if omega is negative, then uh, we are going to have a damping in uh, of the plasma waves. So is omega is negative, so this implies that there is a Fluion less damping of the waves of uh, you can say plasma waves. So, this is something that was not uh, predicted by the fluid theory, and this is called the famous Landau damping. So this is the important thing that uh, by using this uh, kinetic uh, theory, we came to a conclusion that even in the basic plasma phenomena, we have uh, a situation uh, that cannot be explained by the fluid theory. 
or you can say the fluid theory is failed to explain this uh, uh, collisionless damping which we observed uh, during the natural phenomena so uh, that's why we we said that the kinetic theory is a more accurate approach uh, but that doesn't mean that uh, fluid theory is uh, uh, you cannot use the fluid theory we can use the fluid theory in most of the problem but where these kind of situation occurs where the uh the distribution of the velocity is coming into play then we cannot uh, use the fluid theory so kinetic theory is uh, uh, is more appropriate uh now i'm going to show you that what will happen if uh, we have or or how can we explain this uh, collisionless damping uh, in a more uh, uh, physical way or uh, how through the distribution so i'm uh, Okay, so here uh, I am going to draw a distribution that uh, we have uh, something like that. Sorry, it's not. Uh, I will I will give you a better picture uh, when when I will share with you this uh, the PDF of this uh, lecture. So something like that. So. Uh, in this distribution that we have f f of v here and uh, this is v plotted here and this is at some point here we have r b phi now here you can see uh, okay now if if i consider it somewhat a bit more but something like that okay so from if we have uh, our v phi somewhat here now you can see there are more particles here than here so as i have already told you the particles with the velocity very close to the phase velocity of the wave they try to catch up with the wave so when they try to catch up with the wave they will uh, uh, the particles that are left that are uh, that have less velocity they will take energy from the wave and try to compensate their difference so there are more particles more particles that are taking energy from the wave and you can see there is a lesser number of particles that can give energy to the wave because they have slightly higher velocity than the wave so in this situation the wave will damp more particles are taking energy from the wave and less particles are giving energy to the wave so so at, as a result the wave will damp and this will cause landau damping now i will i will uh, uh, put in front of you another scenario where you have a situation like that that instead of that distribution we have something like that that we have a hump here now if our phase velocity is somewhat here now here you can see that just close to that the particles that can give energy to the that can take energy from the wave are less and the particles that can give energy to the wave are larger so in that in that scenario the uh, the wave will will grow and we will we will experience some instability so that is something that uh, fluid model cannot predict 
that uh, even with the with just with the change of the distribution we we can have a damping or we can have a growth so this shows a damping and this shows a growth so these are the certain uh, uh, phenomena that are uh, left unexplained by the fluid theory so up till now so we have uh, what we have discussed here uh, that is all given in the in the book of chen and uh, and i am not going to uh, take anything else from uh, from chen book uh, for the kinetic model i am going to shift to another book which is uh, the montgomery tedman book i will share it with you and i will uh, share uh, the kinetic uh, theory part from uh, or we will uh discuss the kinetic theory from from that book because it is more detailed and uh, it has uh, uh really explained some some things that uh, is not mentioned in the uh, the book of chen so till now uh, do you have any questions कोई तो होगा जो जाग रहा होगा क्यों भाई किसी को कोई क्वेश्चन नहीं है जाग तो रहे हैं बस बोलने का दिल नहीं कर रहा अच्छा क्यों भाई बोलने को क्यों दिल नहीं कर रहा अभी अभी उठे है ना नींद से <laughs> आम सर आप क्या पूछ रहे थे मैं ये पूछ रहा हूँ कि यहाँ तक कोई क्वेश्चन है आपको कोई चीज समझ ना आई हो आम सर वो वाला ग्राफ समझ में आ गया जो आपने पहले बताया था और ये जो ग्राफ सब मैंने दो बनाए हैं और सर उसमें सेकंड वाला मैंने सुना नहीं फर्स्ट वाला मुझे समझ आ गया चले अब आप अब आप देख लें ये दो ग्राफ है पूछ लें जो पूछना है इसके बारे में मैं इसकी जरा बेहतर एक पिक्चर जो है वो आपसे शेयर कर लूंगा वो बुक से मैं यहाँ पर पेस्ट कर दूंगा आप लोग नेक्स्ट जो लेक्चर नोट्स में शेयर कर रहा हूँ वो देख रहे हैं साथ साथ जी सर चैप्टर सिक्स तक देखिए यस नहीं नहीं जो अभी मैंने हर लेक्चर वीडियो लेक्चर के साथ मैंने जो कैनेटिक थ्योरी का जो मैं शेयर कर रहा हूँ यही जो हैंड रिटर्न नोट्स हैं यही मैं इसकी पीडीएफ बना के आप लोगों के साथ शेयर कर रहा हूँ तो उनको भी देखते रहे उसमें मैं बाद में थोड़ी बहुत अमेंडमेंट्स करता हूँ कुछ चीजें साथ थोड़ा बहुत कोशिश करता हूँ उसको ग्राफ्स या पिक्चर्स को एड करके फ्रॉम पी डी एफ तो मुझसे सही नहीं बनती वहाँ पर वो एड करके ताकि आपकी बेहतर अंडरस्टैंडिंग के लिए Yes, जी अगर कोई जी अगर कोई और क्वेश्चन नहीं है तो देन आई विल मूव ऑन टू जो हम कैनेटिक थ्योरी पार्ट जो हम करना चाहेंगे फ्रॉम जो हमारे पास दूसरी बुक है मॉन्ट गॉमरी ट्रेडमेंट की तो मैं उसकी तरफ जाता हूँ ठीक है वहां से थोड़ा सा स्टार्ट करता हूँ आप लोगों को बेसिक आइडिया देता हूँ फिर हम इसको मजीद आगे देख पाएंगे कि ये कैसे आ, हम इसको लेके चलते हैं काइनेटिक थ्योरी को ठीक है जी ओके सर तो अब मैं आपको बेसिकली यहां पर इसकी हेडिंग एक दे देता हूं you can say study of waves in plasma
by Velocity of theory. जो हमने velocity of model बनाया या वो Boltzmann equation जिसमें आपके पास collisions नहीं होती जिसको हम velocity of equation करते हैं तो हम usually उसको ही consider करते हैं कि हमारा जो plasma है वो hot है और उसमें हम collisions को ignore कर सकते हैं so from that point of view a medo from the velocity of equation we have plus v dot So this is our uh, basic velocity of equation. Alpha represents the species. Alpha uh, can be uh, ions or electrons. So, or even 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 a complex plasma, we can have uh, uh, electron ions and dust, or you can have uh, some. Uh, some other kind of pair plasma where we have electron or positron and and many and many uh, species that you can uh, think of in plasma we can have different uh, situation so this alpha is representing the species now let us define uh, some uh, because we are uh, talking about the journal uh, equation so i am uh, going to define here the relativistic momentum this gamma is the relativistic factor okay so uh, by using this term and also defining instead of a i can define some force f which can be represented as dp by dt so here we are considering uh, electron uh, electromagnetic uh, forces so here i will take e plus v cross b but here you can see that i can write uh, this if i take partial f by partial v so i can write it partial f by partial p actually i want to convert this equation in terms of the momentum uh, because it is convenient for us to deal with the with the momentum part instead of this velocity one p by partial v and we have some gamma m partial f by partial v so this is how you will get instead of partial f by partial v we will get gamma m partial f by partial p and also this uh, partial p by partial t can be written as gamma m it will be partial v by partial t and this turns out to be gamma m a so so here this uh, partial p by partial t can be written as gamma m a or from here you can write uh, a as 
1 over gamma m partial p by partial t and this partial p by partial t is this term so we have 1 over gamma m p p plus v cross d okay so by substituting all these terms by using the value of a and uh, partial and equation okay i'm going to write it as this as equation 1 so by using these terms in equation 1 uh, what we will get here partial f by partial t plus v dot partial f partial x plus this force by gamma m that is basically a and we have replaced uh, our partial f by partial v with this momentum part partial f by partial v so these terms will cancel out and uh, we are left with this now i am uh, going to omit this uh, alpha uh, subscript and uh, i am going to replace it with the so so we are going to now this is our this is this will be our equation and we are going to linearize it. And we linearize it in the usual way. That we have, again, I must say that uh, F naught is a function of uh, V only. So we have partial F one by partial T. And there is no variation for v because it's uh, it's a variable. It's uh, uh, you can see uh, it's all information is now included in the distribution. So we are not going to take v equals v naught plus v one. V dot partial f one by partial x plus e. E1, we, ha we have not taken any E0 as before. There is no E0, but here now we are taking B0. So we have uh, these two terms that uh, from this equation. Oh, sorry. dot partial f not by partial p the first order term one with not so this term will appear and the another term we have so and there is another term that will e by c as we don't have e not so this term the second part of this term will not appear but we have v cross b naught and partial f1 by partial so we have this term v cross b naught dot partial f1 by partial p so these are the terms that we will get and uh, here the p P, this f there's a there's another term that you can that you can think of that we have v cross b naught and partial f naught by partial p that's our zeroth order term so uh, i'm uh, i'm going to write the the zeroth order term
from 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 this part so our zeroth order term and there is an interesting information is hidden in this zeroth order term we have uh, you can write it v cross v not dot partial f not by partial p this is my zero third term or i can write it uh, for my convenience as p cross v not dot partial f not by partial p so now you can see this is a scalar triple product so if i take uh, v not in the z direction v not equals some value v not is in the z direction and then i take it outside so i can write this as p cross okay i will uh, z dot because i am more concerned with the with the quantities that uh, are not constant this p and this partial f not with partial p so i can write it in this form this matrix form that we have px py z and then we have 0 0 1 and then we have partial f not by partial px partial f not by partial py we have partial f not by partial y so when when we are going to solve this equation we will get this minus this and uh, you will get px partial f not by partial py and plus e y partial f not by partial p x and that is equals to zero now from here from now on if i if i take uh, uh the cylindrical coordinates if i consider you can take both uh, you can it's it's your choice you can take uh, the cylindrical coordinates you can take any other coordinates you can also take the spherical coordinate but uh, for the journal case in in the in plasma i am going to take cylindrical coordinates so in cylindrical coordinates we have uh this f not is a function of p perpendicular p parallel and phi and uh, this px will be p perpendicular cos phi py will be p perpendicular sin phi and p z equals p parallel this is how cylindrical coordinates works that uh, you have this uh, kind of component now here you can see that uh, partial f not by partial p y so if i'm if, if i want to take partial f not by partial p x or partial f not by partial p y i have to take the uh, have to use the chain rule so partial f not by partial p x can be written as partial f not 
by partial p perpendicular this partial p perpendicular by partial p x plus partial f not by partial phi and partial phi by partial p x so here you can see as uh, p x is a function of p perpendicular and phi so if i want to take the derivative of this distribution function so to px we have to calculate this term. so we have so we can calculate uh, this uh, partial p perpendicular by partial px people usually make uh, um, uh, a mistake that uh, they try to calculate partial p by partial px from this equation but as you can see we have another equation which is p perpendicular square equals px square plus py square so when we take the derivative of this so it will be 2 partial p perpendicular by partial px so 2 2p perpendicular partial p perpendicular by partial px equals 2px is 2 with 2 cancel and we have partial p perpendicular by partial px equals px and this px is p perpendicular px by p perpendicular and this px by p perpendicular is also fine so so from here i can uh, get this uh, term now to calculate this partial phi by partial px i have to uh, you can see that if i divide uh, these two terms we have tangent of phi equals py by px So from here i can write if i take the derivative that secant square phi partial phi by partial px equals minus py by px square so substituting these values equal Minus p perpendicular sine phi divided by p perpendicular square or square phi. So this will be cancelled with this, and we have partial phi by partial p x equals minus. Sine phi. by p perpendicular so this cos square phi and this secant square phi will cancel out and we have this one. now substituting this value a partial phi by partial px and partial p perpendicular by px in this uh, equation uh, let's see what what we will get okay so partial f not by partial px is uh cos phi partial f not by partial p perpendicular plus oh sorry minus sin phi by p perpendicular partial f not by partial phi so this is how i can get partial f not by partial p x so you have this equation and similarly uh, we can we can take partial f not by partial p by also so it's an exercise for you that uh, uh, you have to calculate partial f not by partial p by in in by, by using the same steps that i have uh, done here Partial f not by partial p y. You have to calculate it. 
and that's uh, you can think of as an exercise. So after calculating partial F0 by partial Px and partial F0 by partial Py, we'll substitute it here. And uh, we are, and you have to, and also you have to show that that uh, partial F naught by partial phi is equals to zero. So this is you have to prove. So this shows that uh, our distribution function, the equilibrium distribution function, is independent of this phi parameter. It will be a function of only p perpendicular and p parallel. So there I have mentioned that f0 is a function of, according to the cylindrical coordinates, it's a function of p perpendicular, p parallel, and phi. But after calculating this uh, zeroth order term, so we came to a conclusion that partial f0 by partial phi equals zero. So this f0 has no dependence of phi whatsoever in it. So this will give us that now this F naught is a function of P perpendicular and P parallel only. So there will be no phi dependence. Uh, so you can uh, you can do it uh, even with the spherical coordinates. If I if you take uh, here spherical coordinates, you will you will get uh, you will came uh, you came to the same conclusion that partial F naught by partial phi equals zero. So it is not uh, a coordinate dependent result. It's a journal result that you can drive from any, any coordinate system. So this is your exercise, both of these terms that you have to calculate this one and try to prove that, that this partial F naught by partial phi by substituting these values here, that partial F naught by partial phi equals zero. Okay, see, any question?